quick announcements. Uh, the vigil is still ongoing today at one o'clock from one to one thirty at the cathedral. Everyone is welcome there. Uh, we were on the news last week, so we may expect some new friends to come and join us this morning, which would be awesome. So uh, be on the lookout for being welcoming as new folks join us. Um, tonight at nine o'clock, we have Compline via Zoom. For those of you who wish to join us, the link is on the website. Um, Wednesday, last Wednesday was our first in-person morning prayer and it was wonderful. So we are continuing that weekly. So if you wish to join us for morning prayer in the Memorial Garden, we will be there at 8.30 um, to uh, lift our voices to God early in the morning. So 8.30 on Wednesday, all the other daily offices are still on Zoom. I know there's something else to announce, but I don't remember what it was. Stan is gonna rescue me. Just remember the last Saturday of this month from 10 to 12 is a Dismantling Racism book event where we will make books with the names of over a thousand people of color who have been killed at the hands of the police. So if you want to do, do that, please register now. It's on the website because we only, we'll have space for about 17 people and we'll have uh, materials to get to you before the workshop. Thank you, Stan. Mark. Uh, uh, once again today, we'll have a, um, a, a virtual choir and organ recording of uh, the hymn, uh, Judge Eternal Throned in Splendor. But a reminder that um, this is not for people to sit back and listen to. This is so that you can sing more heartily, more lustily at home. So uh, please join in boldly when you hear the organ introduction to that. And um, um, I'm, I'm still getting used to how you share screens and start PowerPoint and everything. So uh, it, it's a little rough at the beginning, but um, I'm sure it'll be fine. So, but the point is saying. Be well worth it in the end. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna um, ask Stan to bring us into silence uh, as we begin our worship together. start that again. is in his holy temple. <clears throat> Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise, praise. to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity, and guide all the nations upon earth. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who, who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted 
on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Here ends the reading. Glad for you, all you will love her. Rejoice, rejoice with her, all you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her comforting breast. For thus says our God. I will extend peace to her like a river, the wealth of nations like an overflowing stream. You shall nurse and be carried on her arm, and you shall nestle in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. A reading from the book of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman came from that region, from that region, came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the reading. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. 
Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of earth, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Nevertheless, she persisted. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I grew up in the 60s and 70s in Connecticut, in a very white suburb of New Haven. The only black people I knew as a child were the woman who helped clean our house and her husband, and the one black man who lived down the street with his white wife. There were only a handful of black and Asian kids in my high school, and even our city church had only a handful of black members. Though I would not describe my parents as consciously racist, they were, and I was brought up to be unconsciously racist. The world they grew up in and the one I grew up in made it seem normal. It seemed normal to not call out overt or covert racist remarks or actions, to not work toward justice, to buy the arguments that painted people of color with a different brush. Certain jokes were told, certain ethnic accents were used in storytelling. There were neighborhoods one was to avoid. There was the automatic locking of car doors when driving down certain streets. There was the gut reaction when walking down the sidewalk that one should be a bit more careful and perhaps cross to the other side or clutch one's bags tighter when a certain type of male person was coming the other way, a certain type of black male person. The truth was never told about who the Black Panthers really were and what they were trying to do. We were just taught to be afraid of them. Racism was in the air we breathed in the way children were taught to behave, the way I was taught to behave, taught not so much with words, but with actions. Even much later, when I returned to New Haven in my 40s to attend seminary, my wife and I were informed by my mother that the house we wanted to purchase, and eventually did purchase, was in a mixed neighborhood a not well-disguised euphemism for a neighborhood in which black people lived. Perhaps you grew up the same way. Jesus did. Human Jesus. As much a product of his time and place as I am, as you are, shaped as I was, as you were, by conscious and unconscious biases and prejudices and entitlements of culture. Maybe you only remember perfect Jesus from your childhood. Jesus who never got angry, never did anything suspect, never doubted, never had to say he was sorry, never spoke a word he later wished he could take back. Perfect Jesus. But the thing is, Jesus was fully divine, but also fully human, fully human, with all the good and bad that bringing human brings. We see this very human side of Jesus a few times in the Gospels. We see angry Jesus, cranky Jesus, reluctant Jesus. But this Jesus we see today, the humanness he brings to this encounter, takes our breath away. The Canaanite woman, a Gentile, having heard of Jesus and of all the healing miracles, comes to him in desperation, shouting for the sake of her daughter, have mercy. And Jesus ignores her. Everyone ignores her. Merciful Jesus, ignores a woman seeking mercy. I am caught in this moment, every time I hear or read this story. First, because it's so un-Jesus-like, and second, because it rings all too true to our world today. 
This Canaanite woman, this Gentile, knows that Jesus has all the power in this relationship and that she has none. This, this is the moment, the powerful and the powerless. The one without power left out, oppressed, in need. The one with power making a choice to respond or not. Which one are we? And who is the other? Which one am I? Which one have I been? Jesus ignores her, and the disciples try to send her away, but she will not go. She persists, and Jesus throws out a horrible claim. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And I catch my breath. This denial of mercy from the one we know as mercy is painful to watch. But we must watch because what we see next is even more astounding. The woman reclaims her time and challenges Jesus to really see her, to see her as a human being in need. And he does. Jesus is transformed. He is changed. He finally understands the full breadth of God's mission, that it is not limited in scope or nature, that it is for everyone. A very human Jesus learned something of mercy on that day. A very human Jesus learned something of equality on that day. A very human Jesus showed us that we too can be free to admit our mistakes, to challenge our assumptions, to unlearn what society taught and teaches us, to open ourselves to a radically expanded understanding of the sameness of humanity, of the oneness of humanity, of the depth and height and breadth of God's love for all of us and of our responsibility to enact that love with our very lives. I am working hard as an adult white woman to unlearn what I was taught intellectually about people who are not white. I am working hard to unlearn what my body was taught how it was taught to react in certain situations, that work is harder. The table that Jesus gathered people around time and again to teach them about love and mercy is the very table at which he was challenged by the Canaanite woman. The table we gather around time and again to learn about love and mercy is the very table that challenges us over and over again to ask the questions, who is not here? Who is not welcome here? Who does not feel welcome here? Who is only getting crumbs? And how can I change that? Amen. At this time, <clears throat> oh, sorry. At this time, I off, I ask you to offer prayers of intercession and thanksgivings. I'll begin with the prayers that I have, the diocesan prayers, and for those who have passed then ask you to offer out of silence your own prayers, thanksgivings, and Greta will be reading from the chat box. We pray today for those in need or are who, or who are ill from our congregation and friends of our congregation. Dave, Carol, Samantha, Skyler, Danielle, Pat, Tanya, George, David, Anthony, 
Shanti, Rick, Margo, Heather, Sandy, Bruce, Gloria, Debbie, Catherine, Marion, Naomi, Helen, Mary, and Leo. For all those who continue to suffer from COVID-19 in our nation and our world, especially those who have died. We pray for safety and successful beginning of school for those be starting, students, teachers, and professors. We pray also for the repose of the souls of Janet Kotner, Maureen, Terry Jeroleman, and Robert Trump. May they rise in grace and glory. In the Anglican and diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray today for Grace Church Sheldon and the Scottish Episcopal Church. We offer prayers of thanksgivings for the birthday of the very Reverend Greta Getline tomorrow, the 35th wedding anniversary of Sylvia Knight and Bob Wright, and the 20th anniversary of civil union and 10th anniversary of marriage for Stan and Peter. We pray in thanksgiving for the memories of Mary May Ann Sr., Mary Harwood's mother, we pray in gratitude and concern for the farmers who feed us all. We pray for healing for Joy and George, for Joe, for Eileen. We pray for the Postal Service and for all those who carry the mail around this country. We give thanks for the birth of a granddaughter to Paul and Pamela Welcome to the world, Jamie Eloise Van de Graaff. We pray for all who are suffering from COVID in the Central Valley of California. We pray for Jerry and Sharon's daughter, Allison, who was in an accident. We pray for all of all Christians who are seeking equality and justice in this world through love mercy, dialogue, and hard work. We pray for all who are awaiting test results, especially those awaiting test results for COVID-19. We pray for all who are marginalized in this country and around the world. Pray for the homeless, those in poverty, pray for those in prison and refugees. For whom and for what else do we pray? We pray for Al's well-being in, uh, in cataract surgery this week. We pray for all who participate in vigils for racial justice. We pray for the protection and welfare of all protesters and the protection and welfare of all peacekeepers. We pray for all the children in this world, especially those who are returning to school and those who have lost parents and other relatives in this pandemic, for those who are newly orphaned. We pray for all teachers as they return to school and college, that they might be kept safe and be safe. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for we all. We say this together. We say this together. Please join me. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life. 
for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know him and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, who is revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon and among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.